Um, can you talk us through Cole McInerney um, getting his call up on the bench? Obviously, it's been impressive in Super Rugby, but didn't get a lot of chances this year with injuries. Um, yeah, can you just talk us through that selection there? Yeah, oh, look, um, really good um, set piece. Uh, we, we thought that's really important um, against these guys. Um, you know, he's a good defender, really good post tackle presence. Um, yeah, he's he's sort of been with us a fair bit this year, and uh, came in, got got knocked out, and uh, ended up going back. He he's had a bit of an ankle injury, which um, he sort of. Um, rehabbed over the last couple of months and um, so yeah look really really exciting uh, for him and his family um, he's uh, very stoked and Tom Wright coming back on the wing how close was it between him and Geordie Pattaya for that starting spot um, oh look it's very close um, well, we, we we're pretty happy with Geordie from the last effort um, well, we're, we're anticipating this to be a very quick game, and um, so we, we, we think Geordie's um, best value is going to be off the bench. Uh, he does give us a fair bit of versatility. Um, we, you know, we're not convinced that he'd go 80 uh, if he started, and based on the, the balance of a squad, uh, we're best for us to bring him off the bench. And just one more on Connell. Like, there was a few guys that obviously stayed behind just to get a Super Rugby preseason under their belt, was it? Um, what was the thought with him, like taking him on tour, as opposed to giving him a full preseason after the year he's had? Yeah, he's had a fair bit of time rehabbing and um, and getting work into him over the last uh, few months. He was he was with us um, for um, most of the French series, and um, so yeah, look, he's used that time really well. So we, we think he's in a good spot and. And uh, best place for him was here. Uh, Dave, just on the hookers, um, you could spend all all media here uh, talking about the amount of them that you've had. Um, what are you really wanting from your hookers? Uh, it's been a long time since we've had like a a ta traffic plot and our Stephen Moore regular combination. So, what are you really wanting out of them? Um, well, look, I think. Um, Falau's showed the way recently, hasn't he? He's uh, dominated the starting jersey uh, through a really good set piece, and I think his game's grown around the park. Uh, yeah, sometimes it's a point of difference. We've we've played um, Lockie Lonigan there, and we, we like him. Um, you know, he he's got a bit to do around scrum, um, but but very good everywhere else. And um, you know, he gets an off season to try and put on a bit of bit of size, bit of strength, and and um, make shifts around the scrum. Um, so yeah, look, we um, I, I guess from McConnell's point of view, he's got a very good set piece, and he's he's got a real presence in tackle and post tackle. Uh, still growing his game around attack, so uh, yeah, look, that's wide open. It's a great opportunity for him. Would it be too bold a statement to say it's the most wide open position as you know over these next two years leading to a World Cup? Oh, he's certainly he's certainly a great opportunity for uh, for a couple of hookers, yeah. Uh, can I, yeah, I just wanted to go back to, um, sorry, Sammy, just wanted to go back to your mention that you didn't think Geordie could get through 80. Um, where's his body at at the moment? Obviously, cramping was an issue in his, his last test, um, but it's been a common theme through his um, early career so far. Where's his body at at the moment? Oh, look, physically, he's really good. Um, I guess we're working through that. Uh, what we know is the last test... Yeah, he, this is his first start for a while. Um, you know, when you're starting, you have a bigger load during the week, and uh, so we're, we're looking at a, a range of things around uh, why he, why he cramped so badly. It's not just that he cramped. Um, yeah, and what we're anticipating is it should be reasonably warm here. Um, you know, looking at what uh, Japan have picked, six Lucy's in their pack. Uh, we imagine it's going to be a reasonably quick game from their mindset, and um, so we've taken all that into account. And uh, it gives us more flexibility with Geordie on the bench, where he can cover midfield and, and outside backs. Um, 
Um, sorry, Dave, um, you, you've gone in with what is really effectively your strongest team. Um, obviously, some are out injured, Sean not available. Um, who w was there much temptation um, to to you know swap in some of the positions around? Maybe James O'Connor to start or, or Nick White or. Do you really think that given that there's another two weeks before the next test, that it's really important that the continuity that they're playing and that, you know, this side might be the one that faces Scotland in a couple of weeks as well? Um, I mean, we're, we're picking this test uh, for this test, you know, so we think this is a, a good combination uh, for Japan. Um, yeah, but it's, it's our strongest team in, in that regard. And so... Yeah, and the plan is to pick the best side available each week. So, um, yeah, we'll have a little bit more time to sort through things next week. Um, but, yeah, look, um, James going well. He's, um, he's been back in training with us now for three or so weeks. Um, so he's, he's probably as sharp as I've seen him in the last 18 months, which is exciting for us. So, yeah, I look, it's a, it's a competitive spot. Um, Obviously, we're we're back in Quaid based on, you know, he's earned the right to, to wear the jersey over the last few weeks. David, at number six, that's another position you've you've chopped and changed. Um, you did say after Rob was left out of the team after making his first start that you were happy with him. Um, is it just a matter of, as you've spoken about, the quick game in, in hot conditions, he's more mobile than the rest, that's why you put him at back at six, or what was the thinking there? Um, well, he's um, he's a big man. Um, you know, 118 kilos, um, you know, so he'll, he'll carry well for us, we believe. Uh, but he's a good athlete, uh, good physicality and good skill set. So, uh, you know, we, 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 like I said, we were happy with him a couple of weeks ago. We, we changed the mix uh, to give Sean a bit of a crack off the bench and, and started with Pete. Uh, we like Pete on the bench. He gives us good uh, versatility. Um, you know, and very good coming on with, say, 25 to go against uh, tiring defences. So, uh, yeah, yeah, so like a, as I said, you know, Rob went well and we're rewarding that. Just a quick one from me on Samu. Uh, does he, was, he, was he at all close this week? And if he was, I would assume that would make him available at this stage for two weeks' time? Yeah, look, he was pretty close. Um, and we gave him every opportunity to... Um, to come right, but um, yeah, like he, he, if we were playing next week, he'd be okay. You change what difference does it make? Your approach? Sorry, you, do you change your approach by losing a player like Samu? Um, what do you set the the task with uh, with Hunter this week to, to go out there and uh, I guess rectify what Samu's done or play his own game? Oh, like he'll play his own game. I mean, what we know with Hunter. Uh, you know, he's explosive and powerful. Uh, he's got a really good skill set. Um, you know, so not a lot of changes, really. Um, yeah, he's slotted in really nicely. And, um, you know, he's, got a, he's had a full training week um, over here. So, um, yeah, yeah no, we, we think it'll be seamless. And what about his that... progress so far, Dave? Uh, is he close to uh, ready to go? Yeah, no, we like what we've seen from Izzy. Um, he's he's very powerful, very explosive, uh, you know, very quick. Um, he, he's obviously been out for a long time. Um, we're, we're just trying to get him uh, match fit. Really, he uh, he's done a fair bit of work with the Waratahs. He's got a good base now. Uh, we're just trying to sharpen them up, and he's a fair bit to get your head around too, from a structure point of view. Um, so, yeah, look, he's going well. He's 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 picking up things quickly, but. Uh, we just felt that this weekend's a little bit close for him. Um, two more weeks heading into Scotland, he'd, he'd, be a, he'd be a chance for that. Dave, you, just, you mentioned um, uh, Hunter play his own game and, and spoke about his skill set and that sort of thing. And we have seen um, his ability to pass and kick even off both feet. But could he perhaps benefit from taking a little bit of Samu's um, roll on and, and just tucking the ball a bit more. Sometimes he has a tendency to overplay his hand a bit. Yeah, oh, look, I think it's been good for Hunter having Samu around. Um, you know, Samu's been direct when we've asked him to be and uh, give us go forward, and he's, he's actually made a lot of tackle busts and 
and created opportunities off that. So, yeah, look, we feel Hunter can do the same thing. And um, but yeah, certainly, you know, a couple of extra um, experienced backs around have been good for those young men. Dave, um, Quaid Cooper was here a day or two ago and said, uh, you know, a decision on his future, whether he was going to Europe, was above his pay grade. Um, do you have uh, any kind of um, information you can pass on on where, where that kind of situation is, whether this is his final test for the campaign or if he will continue on? Um, yeah, well, look, obviously, the intention is to take him to Europe. And what is, sorry, sorry Dave, do, do you know when that might be resolved then? Is there kind of a timeline that you could kind of outline for that? I mean, like, like through this process, like I said, from a Reg 9 point of view, we, we can take um, Quaid with us. Uh, but we've been working through with the club, um, yeah, out of courtesy, because uh, we want to have a st strong relationship with them and we understand that, you know, they've got goals and aspirations as well. And, They've got a competition that starts early January, so uh, yeah, we've been having uh, constant discussions around that. What is clouding that situ situation, Dave? Because as you say, like it is Reg Nine, like you should be able to take him regardless. Is it? Is it? Do they want him there for a preseason start, running their shape, all that sort of stuff? Like, why? Why? What is it about the situation which has put a question mark over it, given that you do have rights to him as World Rugby Law State? Yeah, and I think. Well, maybe what's clouded, it's not so much for us. Obviously, we've been having ongoing discussions, but uh, as opposed to us just coming in and saying we're taking them, we're trying to talk to the clubs and come to a resolution that suits everyone, you know? So, um, yeah, that's been our mindset. I think the relationship's important. So, um, yeah, so look, we think we'll get a positive resolution. Last couple of English things, guys, and then we'll get the Japanese guys a crack. There's a, so just to continue that, there's a res resolution, is. Because to us, it well, sorry, to me, it seems as simple as a player like Quaid in that situation, he either goes or he doesn't. But is this resolution maybe he comes and plays the first game or the first two games and then comes back rather than spending the whole, you know, four weeks away? I mean, that, 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 could, be, that could be a situation. But, um, I mean, look, the plan is to, um, to take Quaid with us. Dave, um, is it fair to say, like, we're, we're, everyone's focusing on Quaid because he's been so central to the last four tests. But is it fair to say that the other two, Samu and, and Sean, are also in that category? Yeah, yeah, I know we've certainly been talking to uh, Suntory also. Yeah. And just um, who. You're on mute, mate. Sorry. Who, who at the moment would be your um, second fullback option at the moment? Um, is it Andrew Kellaway or is it or Geordie Pataya? Who, who, yeah, um, I mean, Kels is training there. Uh, we could play James back there as well. Um, so, yeah, we've got a fair bit of flexibility within that group. I might give the Japanese guys a go unless there's anything super pressing. Thanks, guys. Uh, Fumi, can you invite the Japanese media to ask a few questions of Dave for the next five minutes, please? Yes, I will. I'm Kokai from Kyoto Communications. So I'd like to ask your impression of Brave Blossoms and how do you analyze the Japan team is and the background of why you select those players for your starting member? Um, oh, look, we've spent a lot of time uh, looking at um, the Brave Blossoms. Um, I like that they're a good side. We've, uh, we've gone back to look at the World Cup games. We've, um, We've looked at their recent stuff against the Lions in Ireland. Um, you know, they continue to make massive shifts. Um, you know, got a hugely experienced and high quality coaching group. Um, you know, very innovative and and so we've uh, we're trying to make sure that our players understand. Uh, you know, we're going to be tuned in throughout. So, uh, but ultimately, we're also focused on us and we're picking the best team to play the type of game that we need to play.